I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and here today with me is Chris Mancini, analyst at Gabelli Asset Management. Thanks for joining me today. So we're here at Minds and Money. This is the first time that we're talking. Can you start by telling me a little bit about yourself and what you do at Gabelli Asset Management? Sure. Um, I am an analyst at Gabelli Asset Management. I follow mining companies. Gabelli is a New York Stock Exchange listed company. It has around $43 billion under management. Um, primarily, it's value investing led by a team um, that's led by Mario Gabelli, who's the founder of the firm. Um, within that $43 billion, there are a couple funds which are gold and natural resource oriented uh, funds. So there's a $300 million open-end gold fund called the Gabelli Gold Fund, and then two closed-end funds, which are income funds. Um, I I focus on mining companies, primarily precious metal mining companies, uh, and I help manage uh, those funds, including the the open-end gold fund. Earlier today, you participated in a panel here focused on gold. What's your view on gold so far this year? Has it performed as you expected, or were there surprises for you? Uh, So far, it's performed pretty much as I've expected. Uh, There's been, what happened last year uh, was that I thought that the yield curve was going to actually start to invert. Um, And I thought what was going to happen was that as interest rates rose, the market was going to see that it wasn't sustainable rising interest rates because there's too much debt in the economy. Um, And the yield curve was starting to invert into the end of the year. Uh, what happened was that the big tax bill was passed, and that was a, a, for, a huge form of stimulus for the U.S. economy that essentially is bringing growth forward right now. So, um, you know, it's, it's a trillion dollars of, of tax cuts and all, uh, and it's gotten the economy juiced right now for, uh, for the first half of the year, probably for the rest of the year. And that's going to allow the Fed to raise rates without necessarily having Um, as big of an impact on the economy as they otherwise would have had without the effects of these big, uh, of of this big stimulus in the form of tax rates. So the yield curve's not as close to inverting now as it was at the end of last year. Um, So ultimately, at at the end of the day, I think it's going to take an inverted yield curve to cause the gold price to really rally. So as long as we're feeling the effects of the stimulus, I think that gold will probably be range bound. Um, once the, the effects of the stimulus kind of wear off uh, and, and then the economy has to deal with and adjust to higher interest rates, I think that the yield curve again is going to start to invert and gold's going to do a lot better. So that's really what we need to see to have gold move higher. What about geopolitical issues and things like that that people also look at in terms of gold? I think geopoliticals can have an effect. I think that at the end of the day, what gets gold to move higher is really supply and demand based on individuals wanting to own it as a hedge against currency debasement. That currency debasement could come from um, the risk that a government repossesses bank accounts. Um, it could come from the risk that there'll be some kind of bombing campaign or an actual invasion of a certain country. Uh, So, for example, if there were a risk in South Korea that North Korea were to actually, God forbid, invade South Korea, then South Koreans would probably go and buy lots of gold. I I, I don't think that that risk is extremely high right now. And despite all the rhetoric that's taken place over the past year or so, I, I don't think that that risk has really been, ever really been over the past year that high. So, again, I mean, I think the geopolitical risk can play into the gold price, but at the end of the day, uh, it's, it's really going to take effect if there is physical demand from a country in which that geo- phys- uh, geopolitical risk is taking place. And you mentioned the Fed. How many rate hikes do you think we're looking at for 2018? I, I think that we're going to have a couple more this year. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that the Fed's just going to keep r- r- raising rates according to their schedule. Um, and... I think, again, they'll be able to raise rates according to their schedule because we've had this really big stimulus um, in the form of tax cuts. Uh, So I think this year it's really going to go as planned. And then next year, again, once the effect of the tax cuts start to wear off, the question is will they be able to continue to raise rates. And I, I think that we'll start to have issues towards the beginning to middle of next year. So there's lots of different variables. Do you have a specific gold price prediction for this year? For this year, I think it's going to be pretty range bound um, between 1300 and 1375. Um, I think that next year it probably moves up above 1400, and then we 
you know, the hope is that we'll start to see a sustainably higher gold price. And, and that is what will really, I think, get the gold stocks to move. Okay, so that was my next question. What should investors be doing in this environment? And is it a good time to invest in gold stocks? It sounds like maybe we need to wait a little bit. I think if you're patient, um, now's a good time. I, I, I think, though, that you know, if you're looking for a quick bang for your buck, um, you might not get it in, in gold stocks now, frankly. Um, I think that there's a lot of value right now. So if you're a very patient investor and, and you have uh, a, a, the stomach for it, and it's, you know, the, the, the stomach to weather some potentially pretty severe volatility, I think you'll be rewarded. Um, although, again, I... You know, it's extremely hard to time this, so it's hard for me to say, look, wait until, you know, September 30th of 2018, and, you know, that, that's when to get in. Um, but I'd say that you can expect, again, you know, some, some volatility in the market, but if you're very patient, there's a lot of value, and now it would be a good time to invest. What criteria do you use when you're picking stocks, and are there any specific gold stocks you think are a good investment currently? Sure. We look for companies that have, um, first and foremost, the best assets in the world. So the best mines, uh, long life, generally low cost mines. Um, and the jurisdiction is, is extremely important too. Uh, then we look for at, at, uh, companies which have very good managements. And those are companies that have been proven to be able to exploit that gold in the ground. And once the gold is pulled out of the ground and they generate free cash flow, uh, are, do a good job of allocating that free cash flow or allocating that capital. And then thirdly, we look for valuation. So we look for, you know, we, we aren't going to pay an extremely high price for something that has those first two attributes, um, but we are willing to pay up for those two attributes. Um, in terms of gold stocks, which, which meet that criteria, one is actually Rand Gold Resources, which has an excellent, it has two very good, you know, top tier, top decile mines. Um, one's the Lulu Guancoto complex in Mali. The other is the Kabali mine in the DRC. Um, and then they have another mine, Tangan, in the Ivory Coast. Uh, those mines are going to generate lots of free cash flow. The company has cash on its balance sheet. The management has been excellent in allocating cash. We think that at the end of this year, they'll be able to pay uh, a four to five dollar share dividend um, and hopefully show that that's sustainable over time because they're going to be building another project called Masala. Um, if, if they pay a $5 per share dividend this year, the stock's $80 a share. So that equates to something like a 6% dividend yield. And I think the market will recapitalize the stock at a much lower dividend yield and at a much higher stock price. Any final thoughts or advice you would leave gold investors with for the year? I just think that, you ha that everybody should have gold in their portfolios. Um, I think that it's a hedge that's necessary to have in these unprecedented times in terms of uh, the levels of debt in the economy and what's been happening in terms of uh, central bank intervention and monetary policy. So everybody should have some. It's been tough. It's been rough. But you really just have to be patient. And now is a good time to maybe average down or just start to start to have a position because there is a lot of value in the market. Okay, well, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. That was great. Once again, I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and this is Chris Mancini.